Hello, and thanks for joining us again. I'm Eric Wamsley, part of ExxonMobil's Butyl Polymer Customer Application Development Team. You know what? Life is beautiful. Today we're going to talk about air retention, primarily in tires, but this can also apply to many other applications as well. In this overview, we will discuss how we test oxygen permeation through rubber compounds and, as an example, how to evaluate tire air retention performance by measuring its pressure loss. We will also review a model innerliner formulation, along with some trade-offs when creating a compound, such as balancing air retention with other desirable properties. Before entering into the core of our presentation, let me summarize one of the things that differentiates butyl from other elastomers and why it is a key enabler for excellent air retention. Butyl rubber is a copolymer of isobutylene and about 2% isoprene. It has a significantly lower vapor transmission to small molecule diffusants than other elastomers. Remember that for isobutylene-based polymers, the presence of bulky dimethyl groups tends to push themselves apart, creating a wider bond angle, up to about 124 degrees. This enables tighter packing, as we can see in the diagram on the right. The ultra-low permeability of isobutylene chains can be attributed to its high packing density. The tightly packed molecular structure results in the following unique properties. High density, low permeability, high damping, a broad glass transition temperature, and great ozone, water, and chemical resistance. Butyl rubber was first used to produce tire inner tubes due to its excellent flexibility, fatigue resistance, and improved air retention over natural rubber. Halogenation by either bromine or chlorine, as described in the tutorial Butyl Rubber Introduction, greatly extends the usefulness of butyl polymers by significantly decreasing curing times. This enabled co-vulcanization of other general purpose polymers used in the tire carcass without affecting the desirable impermeability and fatigue properties. Ultimately, this advancement enabled the development of a tubeless tire. Butyl rubber is used across many industries in a variety of applications ranging from tires, pharmaceutical stoppers, hoses, adhesives and sealants, sporting goods, and rubber parts used in automotive, industrial, and consumers' products. Now, let's focus on impermeability. Why does impermeability matter? For applications such as tires, footballs, and soccer balls, it's important that the air stays inside. But for pharmaceutical stoppers, it's important that air and other contaminants stay out. Still, there are some other applications such as auto hoses and even construction windows where it's critical to keep some things out, like moisture and air, while at the same time preventing the loss of necessary fluids and gases that are inside. Butyl rubber provides great barrier properties for all of these applications. Today, we are going to be focusing on impermeability in tires, which leads to proper air retention. Proper air retention means better fuel economy, longer tire life, and higher personal safety when traveling. Today's tires are not just round and black, but they are a very complex composite of multiple components, materials, and manufacturing processes. By adjusting these materials and components, tire designers can tune and tweak the balance of a tire's handling, durability, and efficiency for each specific tire application. Regardless of the specific tire model, it is the job of the innerliner to keep air inside once the tire has been properly mounted and inflated on the wheel. Butyl rubber is the material which enables the best innerliner performance. A good innerliner will keep moisture and chemicals away from the internal tire components. It will also keep oxygen away from steel belts so they are protected against oxidation. It will also have and maintain great flex fatigue resistance throughout the life of the tire. Another thing a good innerliner must do effectively is adhere to the carcass ply compound. It needs to do all of these things in addition to keeping inflation pressure at optimal levels for as long as possible. If the tire doesn't maintain optimal air pressure between service intervals, the consumer will lose the performance enhancements from the tire designer's improvements. Low air pressure results in poor gas mileage, poor tire life, 
and it will impact your vehicle's handling performance. With vehicle service intervals now increasing to as much as 10,000 miles, it is more important than ever to have a very good innerliner on the inside of your tires. The first step in evaluating the air retention performance is an air impermeability test of the innerliner compound. An oxygen permeation analyzer, as depicted here, measures the amount of oxygen that permeates through a membrane. We can utilize this test to estimate the loss of air going through a typical innerliner compound. Using this analysis, it is easy to see the impact innerliner gauge and formulation have in a compound's ability to act as an air barrier. Since gauge does play a key role in air retention, it is critical to normalize test results to account for any gauge differences in the test samples so we can evaluate only the compound's formulation. At ExxonMobil, we also have the availability of a gas permeability tester that operates with a different principle. It relies on pressure differential across the barrier and can provide similar results. Both are available at our various research centers. Contrary to popular belief, not all tires hold air the same. While we test for air retention properties of the innerliner compound, a separate test is needed to quantify the air retention of a fully constructed tire. ASTM F1112, or the Inflation Pressure Loss Rate Test, measures the percentage of air loss per month in static conditions at 21 degrees C, or close to room temperature. At ExxonMobil, we have seen that air retention can vary from a low of 0.9% to as much as 4% for different passenger tire models. In service, these losses can be two to three times higher than what we see with the IPLR test. This is mostly due to the higher operating temperatures. Poor air retention in tires requires more frequent maintenance by the consumer and results in more underinflated tires on the highway. An underinflated tire will lead to poor fuel economy due to increased rolling resistance. This is in part a result of increased contact area of the tire on the road. It also leads to more tread wear and a shortened tire life. Compounds can be categorized into having separate material systems. They have a polymer system. For tire innerliner, a 100% halobutyl polymer is the optimal material for barrier performance. They have a filler system. Here, carbon black is added. It is optimized for hardness, flexibility, and processing. There is also a viscosity modifier. This is usually a medium weight oil. Compound vulcanizates all have some type of cure system. It is also common to have a protectant system, but for butyl polymers, this is usually not needed because of its low unsaturation level. Additionally, there are usually some special additives for specific application needs. Since rubber is the most significant portion of the inner liner compound, the composition of the rubber used is expected to have a critical impact on all aspects of inner liner performance. We saw earlier that a quality inner liner requires not just good air retention, but also flex fatigue resistance. In addition, adhesion to the carcass of the tire, heat resistance, and oxidation resistance are required. While air retention and flex fatigue performance of chlorobutyl and bromobutyl are comparable, the adhesion of chlorobutyl to the carcass is lower than that of bromobutyl. Natural rubber is often added to chlorobutyl innerliner compounds to improve adhesion to the carcass. It will also help with processing, building tack, and can help to balance compound cost. However, bromobutyl innerliners can successfully be made using no natural rubber as its adhesion to the adjacent compound is superior to that of chlorobutyl. While natural rubber does have some processing benefits, it comes at the expense of halobutyl content. Not only does air retention improve when the halobutyl content is increased, decreased unsaturation versus natural rubber improves fatigue life. Ultimately, this leads to a tire with improved durability. On this graph, we highlight five different innerliner formulations corresponding to different halobutyl natural rubber ratios from 100% halobutyl to 0% halobutyl. From this graph, it is easy to see that as halobutyl content is increased, 
as shown by the formulation lines, the pressure loss improves and IPLR decreases. We spoke earlier about innerliner gauge affecting permeability. Here, we illustrate this point where we see that as gauge goes up on the x-axis, the pressure loss decreases for a given formulation. The dotted purple arrow represents a 67% gauge increase. The purple dots and solid arrow show the expected IPLR benefit for this gauge increase. The problem with this approach would be the added weight. As an alternative way of achieving reduced pressure loss in a tire, we could increase halobutyl content. We can see that the halobutyl content plays a more dominant role in air retention when compared with gauge. To achieve the same IPLR benefit as this 67% gauge increase, you would only need to increase halobutyl content by 20 PHR, from 80 PHR to 100 PHR. This alternative compound design could lead to a lighter weight innerliner with improved air retention. The lighter weight will also contribute to better fuel efficiency. While the rubber composition plays a significant role in air retention and fatigue life, other components in the rubber compound also contribute to the performance of the innerliner. The general trends for some of the other components are presented here. Adjusting carbon black does affect most properties such as Mooney, fatigue life, modulus, hardness, and others, including impermeability. Increasing carbon black, or possibly adding other fillers, will improve impermeability, but this comes with a lower fatigue resistance beyond a certain loading. If you increase oil, it will generally help with processing by decreasing compound viscosity. However, it does result in a significant decrease in impermeability. Homogenizing agents help to improve compound dispersion. This leads to improved tensile properties and fatigue life. These generally do not impact the innerliner impermeability. Tachifiers, not shown in these graphs, follow the trends of process oils. These could be considered substitutes to keep compound viscosity relatively constant while adjusting build tack. Our model cure system for tire innerliners shown here is applicable to many barrier applications as well. In general, the air retention of an innerliner does not depend on the cure state of the compound. This means that you can use different curing systems to reach your desired cure state without affecting the barrier performance. Formulation is just the first step in rubber compounding, but mixing and processing the compound into its final form both pose their own set of hurdles. Do you need a butyl technical expert? For help with compound formulation, mixing, calendaring, and extrusion, feel free to contact ExxonMobil's technical team by going to butylrubber.com and clicking on the Connect with our Experts icon. We have discussed in detail the importance of air retention in tires, but remember, life is beautiful. There are many more applications where impermeability is just as important. Now that you've seen what makes butyl rubber so unique and special, be sure to tune in to our additional webinars coming soon for butyl rubber. And remember, life is beautiful. <laughs>